I see what he's driving at, but how on earth is he going to get there? How on earth is he going to get there, I am asking. All I can do is again to ask you to be patient and to hope. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will now begin. My subject, as you know, ladies and gentle, cut. Ladies and gentle, cut. La la la, ladies, cut. La la la, cut. La la, cut. Ludwig, bist du eine Tatsache? Galstonsche Fotogriff. Sense of life. What makes life worth living? Worth, value, importance. Ethics is the inquiry into what is good. Ethics is the inquiry into what is valuable. Ethics is, if anything, the natural science of value. Distinction between relative and absolute value. Examples. Statements of relative value. Goodness or importance are statements of facts, which are in no way problematic. C contrast of judgments of absolute value. Attitudes of the judge to the judged. No statements of facts is or implies an absolute judgment. Science and the whole realm of proposition contains no absolute, no ethical judgment. Still, let us investigate such absolute judgments, and that we can only do by investigating the cases where we are tempted to make absolute judgments. I will describe an experience which I always must think about when I want to fix on what I mean by absolute importance. The experience of wandering at the world. The word to wander has of course a good sense, which we all understand if it means to wander at a certain state of things, to wonder that such and such is the case. It has a good and clear sense to say that I wonder at some unusually dressed man as I have never seen before, or at some strange sound, etc, etc. It is also clear what it means to wonder at the existence of, say, a building which you thought would have been pulled down long ago. For here it has meaning to say, I didn't think that this building still existed, or to say that it does exist. On the other hand, it is nonsense and not a prop at all to say that color and sound exist, and for this reason it's nonsense to say that I wonder at their existence. Now the correct, right expression of what we mean when we say that color and sound, etc., exist, is not a proposition at all, but really the vocabulary. I will now begin. Let me explain this. Suppose 
one of you were an omniscient person and therefore knew all the movements of all the bodies in the world, dead or alive, then he or she also knew all the states of mind of all human beings that ever lived. And suppose this man or woman wrote all he or she knew in a big book, then this book would contain the whole description of the world. Certainly that would be as extraordinary a thing as I can imagine. Probably many of you came up to this lecture of mine with slightly wrong expectations. I know I am playing badly, but I do not want to play any better. All the other man could say would be, ah, then that's. Now perhaps some of you will agree to that and be reminded of Hamlet's words, nothing is either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. And there, in my case, it always happens that the idea of one particular experience presents itself to me, which therefore is in a sense my experience for excellence. This is a good chair. This means that the chair serves a certain predetermined purpose and the word good here has only meaning as far as this purpose has been previously fixed upon. And when we say this man's life was valuable, we do not mean it in the same sense in which we would speak of some valuable jewelry. But it seems to be, but there seems to be some analogy 